Today we're going to be learning how to use Adobe Spark. So what can Adobe Spark be used for? Well, it's good for making digital stories using pictures, text, video, and sound. Kind of like this presentation. To run Spark, you'll need a current web browser. Firefox seems to work the best, but Chrome works as well. You'll also need to have Adobe Flash installed and have an active internet connection. If you're an iOS user, you can also download a free app from the App Store for your iPad or iPhone. To get started, just point your browser at spark.adobe.com. Next, click on the login button in the upper right corner. There's a couple different ways you can sign in. You can use Facebook or your Google account if you have one. If you have an Adobe ID, you can use that, or you can sign up with your email address. Once you've logged in, this is the page you'll see, and today we're going to be creating a video. All right, are you ready for the hardest part of your Spark presentation? Coming up with a name. Come up with something creative, but that will also convey what your story's about. This is the next screen you'll see, and it's where you'll be adding all of the content to your Spark presentation. You can add slides by clicking on the plus sign in the lower left-hand corner. You can also click on the three dots on any slide you've already created to duplicate it or delete it. Now you'll be choosing the colors and fonts for your presentation. You do this from the Themes tab on the right-hand side of the screen. You can't make changes to the themes, but there's plenty of them, so you should be able to find something that will fit your presentation. Now you need to decide how you want your content to be laid out on your slide. This is also pretty simple because you have four options. You just have to decide where you want your things to go. When you're ready to start adding content, just click on the gray plus sign. There's four types of content that you can work with. The first option is text. This is pretty straightforward. You can type as much as you want and it'll automatically resize to fit your text on the screen. If you want to add a photo, you have a few options. You can upload your own photos by clicking on the Upload Photos button, or you can find photos. This will do a Creative Commons image search and will automatically credit the photos at the end of your presentation. Icons are very similar to photos and will give your page a little more visual flair. These are also Creative Commons licensed. Finally, you can add video to your story. To do so, you'll need to use the full screen plus a thing layout. Just click on Upload Video, and it'll bring up the video editing window. So this is the screen where you edit your video, and as you can see, these little handles are where you change your start and end time by dragging them left or right. You can only add 30 seconds of video per slide, but you can add more by extending the video onto a new slide. When you're ready, click on the Save button, and your video will be saved to your current slide on your presentation. Once you've added your video, there's several things you can do. You can zoom in to make certain parts of the image larger. You can trim the video to reselect where it begins and ends. You can extend your video in case it ran longer than 30 seconds. This will bring up the video editing window on a new slide for you to continue. You can also change the volume of your video. You can raise it, lower it, or mute it. When you're ready to record narration for your presentation, just click and hold the orange microphone button at the bottom of your current slide. The first time you do this, it will ask permission to use your microphone. After this, as long as you're holding down your mouse button on the orange microphone, you'll be recording. You can record a maximum of 30 seconds of audio. You can also add music to your presentation using the Music tab. The songs are arranged by mood. Finally, you can change the timing of your slides by using the slider in the lower right-hand corner. The default is two seconds, but you can make them longer or shorter as you need to. When you're ready to preview your story, click on the preview button at the top of the screen. You can then share your story. This will let you upload your story to the Spark website where it can be viewed by the public, or you can choose to download the video file instead to upload somewhere else. The most common problem you might see is your video not uploading. You need to make sure your video is in MP4 format. Also, if it is an MP4 format and isn't working, just try it a second time and it'll probably work. If you've clicked on preview and your story isn't loading, try reloading the web page. This will make your story load. Then you'll just need to hit the play button and you're ready to go.